In the next couple of videos, we're going to focus on building the registers for this computer. And the registers are a fundamental building block of any computer. And we've got a couple of them in this computer, and they're, they're fairly simple. Uh, actually, they're just uh, three chips. We've got a 74LS245 and a couple 74LS173s. And then we've got some LEDs to show us what data is in the register. And basically, a register just stores uh, some data. It stores eight bits of data. In this case, it's an eight-bit computer. And then it interfaces to the bus. And so to really understand the function of a register, you've got to understand how uh, the bus works within a computer and the, and the importance of the bus in the computer. So most computers are organized around a bus. And in fact, many computers have multiple buses, but in this case, we're going to keep things simple. We have a single bus here. And a bus is basically just a, a collection of wires that are, that are sort of a common connection point for multiple components within, within the computer. In this case, we've got an 8-bit bus, so there are eight wires that we're, we're essentially using for common connection going to, to all of the different components. And you know, we're building it with uh, the, the, the kind of terminal strips for the power uh, from the breadboards. And so what you can do is you can take one of these breadboards and you just snap off this, uh, this power strip here. And you know, it's, there's some foam tape or something. You can, you can get a knife and just kind of cut that off. Um, but what you end up with is you just end up with these little terminal strips and you can get a couple of them and connect them together. And, and that's essentially what, what I've done here with this bus is taken eight of these and you, or well, four of them at a time here. So you get four of these and you connect them together. Each one has, has two strips and all of, the, all of the connection points along each of these strips are all connected together all the way down. And so there's eight, uh, eight lines uh, you know, across here. And then I've got you know, four of them here, and then four of them down here, and you can see these, these jumpers here connect them. So they connect all the way down. Uh, and that forms the bus, and that forms this common connection point with eight bits of data uh, that, that everything connects to. And so all of these blue wires that you see here are connecting, you know, these blue wires coming in from register A, and these blue wires coming in here. This is the memory address register. You can see, you know, wires coming in here, from here. All these blue wires that you see going off to all these, all these other all these other pieces of the computer, those are all connecting to the bus. And the bus provides this common connection point where you can essentially do what, what's called bus transfers, which is moving data from one part of the computer to another, uh, where one module can put data onto the bus and then another module can read that data from the bus. And so that's what we typically see, and that's one of the, the main things that a register is gonna do. And so just kind of show an example of this, um, I've got, some stuff programmed here that just kind of moves some data around so we can, we can take a look at it. Um, I will manually advance the clock to kind of get things going. And what you'll see is, you know, data is coming and going from the bus. Uh, and, and right now what's happening is we've got particular data in memory. I just have this, you know, 010101 pattern. Uh, and you can see that that pattern is also on the bus. And that's because the, the memory module here is putting that data on the bus. It's just driving that, um, you know, just, just pushing that same data that's here out these wires here and, and onto the bus. And so that data, you can see it, um, you can see it up here. Uh, these are just showing what's on these eight, these eight bus lines. Uh, but that data is also being fed to all these other modules should they care to, to read it. And so in this case, the way this is set up right now, and I won't go into the details of how it's all programmed, we'll get into that later, uh, but what, what's gonna happen is on the next clock cycle, the A register, you know, register A here, is gonna read whatever's on the bus, which is this. Um, and then it's gonna latch that into and, and store that. So we'll, we'll go ahead and hit the, the next clock cycle here, just the manual clock button. And you see now that data, that 010101 data, is in register A. And so what happened is the memory module over here put that data onto the bus um, and then the A register read it from the bus. And so we essentially are able to move that data from one module to another. But it doesn't always have to be from memory to register A. It could be from anything to anywhere. Um, so I'll go forward a couple more uh, cycles here. And now we have a different pattern here in memory. So 01100110. And you see that's now on the bus. Now we can, you know, the way this is programmed, it's going to go into register B. So I'll hit the clock again. And you can see now that pattern, that 01100110 pattern, is in register B. Um, still transferred through the bus, but instead of going from here to here, it's going from here to here. And that's just a, a function of which register is reading from the bus at a particular point in time. Um, so each of these registers has some control lines that tell it when to, to read data from the bus or when to put its data on the bus. You know, so for example, right now, the sum register is, is putting its data on the bus. So this 
uh, sum, which is just the, the sum of these two if you add them up. So zero, or one plus zero is one, and zero plus one is one, and one plus one is zero, carry the one. Um, so this is, this is, you kind of add them up. This is the sum of A and B. And so this is the data that's on the bus right now. And what's going to happen on the next clock cycle is that's actually going to go into register A. And there it is. So this is this was in the sum register. Now it's in register A. Of course, sum register is different because A and B are different. But uh, that, that's not you can kind of ignore that. But but the point is that we can use this bus as this common way of, of transferring data from one part of the computer to another, whether it's from memory to a register, from one register to another register, or from you know a register to memory or uh, register to the output. Um, the, the bus provides this kind of any to any connection, you know, that everything is connected to it, and so we can move data from anywhere to anywhere. Very flexible. To get a better sense of how this works, I, I've kind of drawn this up to make it a little maybe maybe a little bit simpler to understand. Um, so this is the, this is our bus. We've got these eight uh, connections, and I've just done each a different color to see so you can see that that each color um, is is a separate wire, and you know this this red that you see here going into A is the same red that's going into C. So any any voltage that's on this wire is going to show up here, it's going to show up here, it's going to show up down here, it's going to show up over here, it's going to show up, it's going to show up everywhere. Everywhere you see red, <laughs> um, you know, that that's going to be the voltage. But there's eight of them. So there's eight eight bits. Each one can be different. Um, but but basically all eight of those bits are showing up on, on each module in the computer. And this is really flexible because, you know, in this diagram I've got A, B, C, and D. Uh, but you could have you know, this could keep going. You could have arbitrarily many um, uh, modules, and that and that's what makes makes this really flexible. Because in you know larger computer designs, um, there might be a lot of things connected to to this bus, um, and you know everything that's connected to the bus can talk to potentially everything else connected to the bus. So it's very flexible. But the way it works is each of these. Um, things that's connected to the bus, essentially. Um, you know, we can think of them as just as registers, but there's other things that might be connected to the bus, memory and the outputs and inputs and so forth. Um, but, but everything that's connected to the bus you know, can, have, um, can have its input connected to the bus, and it can also have its output connected to the bus. And in order to control uh, you know, what's going on on the bus, each module also has uh, a couple signals, uh, control lines coming into it. So there's, you know, typically something like a load signal and an enable signal for each. And what the enable signal does is it says whatever value is in this register or this, this module or whatever, whatever eight bits of data that it has, um, when the enable goes high, it says put that data out here on the bus, output that data. And so then that data gets output on the bus when this enable goes high, and all of the other modules can then see that data and you know may or may not do anything with it, but but that data goes out to everything else. And then another module, if you uh, if you turn on this load, if, if this load signal goes high, that says read whatever's on the bus. Uh, so if A sets the enable signal high and C over here sets the its load signal high, or C isn't setting it high, but some some controller that we're we're gonna we'll, we'll sort of we'll assume something uh, is controlling these 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 little control lines here, um, and, and, you know. And for now, I'm just gonna ask you to kind of take it on faith that that, that is magically happening. Um, in in future videos, we'll talk about how that control logic actually works. Uh, uh, but for now, let's let's say that somehow the computer knows that it should uh, you know turn on the enable of A and the load of C, and what that's going to do is it's going to say A should be outputting data and C should be inputting data. And that, and that essentially causes a, a bus transfer of whatever data is in A to go over to C. Uh, and the actual timing of that is based on this clock input. So each of these modules has a clock input and there's a common clock signal uh, that's coming in that's connected to all of these modules. Well, each of these modules has a little clock input, and on each clock pulse, Whichever modules have their load uh, signal turned on will read whatever's on the whatever's on the bus, and 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 load it at that particular time. 